welcome back friends in this video tutorial we'll be talking about uh, the infectivity of clostridium botulinum we've already talked about clostridium species the general introductory video about the clostridium species so you can go and that kind of uh, introductory video can be applicable for any kind of clostridium species so don't worry about that but in this video we'll be specially talking about the type of infections caused by clostridium botulinum and there is only one answer for that there is only one answer the answer is that the clostridium botulinum usually it causes botulism so let me write botulism this is the big disease that are that, that is caused by clostridium botulism uh, this particular strain now this bacteria is a uh, very very important uh, uh, clinical significance so it carries very important clinical significance because this this bacteria is causing this botulism disease and uh, and it is causing this disease using only one important material only one for one important thing and that thing is that thing is the most potent so let me write the most potent toxin known till now most potent toxin in world and that toxin is termed as botulism toxin so it should be you botulism toxin or botulinum toxin whatever now this toxin is the most dangerous and most potent type of toxin still available for humankind okay now this toxin almost single handedly can cause all the different kinds of diseases and symptoms because it was suggested it was found that even if in during the infection if there is no uh, there is no presence of clostridium botulinum bacteria but still if there is a presence and of minute trace uh, trace of this botulinum toxin that is going to cause this disease uh, in in same kind of way if uh, the clostridium botulinum present in the same way right so it is not required uh, for for the onset of this this kind of botulism infection it is not required that the clostridium botulinum always presents the endotoxin uh, the exotoxin not endotoxin it's an exotoxin can do the work so let me write it's an exotoxin so this exotoxin or presence of this exotoxin will do the work it will cause botulism right now the botulism uh, can be divided into three different kinds so let me talk about each of them here we'll be talking about them now another thing i must tell you that this clostridium uh, botulinum this kind of bacteria usually they live in soil so they live in soil so they are a kind of soil microorganisms so this uh, if, if if any reason if by any mean uh, we have infected or if we have contaminated our food source so let me talk about food source so food source is very very important part so due to a mishandling of the foods and uh, less processivity of the foods if anyhow this kind of bacteria can move from the soil to food source in those cases it can contaminate us it can cause diseases in human being otherwise it won't right and it is uh, pretty common that this kind of disease is shown in infants it is also pretty common because infants usually drink milk and also they uh, they take uh, honey and all these cases uh, now this clostridium botulinum can stay there for longer period of tiny time in this environments so most of the clostridium infections that we will be encountering are from uh, the contamination from soil to food and then we take up this food and then the infection will be caused right now this botulism can be divided into three different sections or three different parts so the first part is called as classical classical botulism the second part is called as the second one is called as infant infant botulism and the third type of botulism is called as so let me write the third type is called as wound botulism wound botulism so these are the three types of botulism that are available now in case of the classical botulism this is a typical uh, case of botulism where it it arises from a contaminated food so let me write from contaminated contaminated food food source okay and uh, for the infants uh, this infant kind of now now uh, for and also also uh, it is coming from contaminated food uh, and this this is common in adults too so you can see this classical kind in adults most of the time and this kind of infection can be seen uh, from 12 to 36 hour of the injection hour of the infection actually of the infection okay 
we are going to see the different symptoms now symptoms like muscle spasm right now usually i forgot to mention that what is botulism botulism is a kind of uh, paralysis it's a form of paralysis so let me write it's a kind of paralysis where should i write uh, i must write it below here so kind of paralysis now in this kind of paralysis you you can you you lost your ability to reconstruct uh, the muscle right so unable to con contract muscle so unable to contract muscle this kind of paralysis is caused due to the toxicity of clostridium toxin uh, and some other cases uh, there are also other kind of paralysis caused by different types of bacteria like uh, one is uh, can be caused by tetanus bacteria clostridium tetany and in those kind of paralysis that is a kind of spastic paralysis in those case you will be unable uh, to recontract your muscle that means if your muscle is getting contracted that form will be stayed for an extensive period of time right but in this case you will be unable to contract your muscle that's the difference between the tetanus toxin poisoning as well as the botulinum toxin poisoning okay now both of them are paralysis but the tetanus toxic paralysis is called so let me write here this is very very important but the tetanus so tetanus toxin poisoning is called as this kind of paralysis is called as or termed as so let me write it is termed as a spastic paralysis because it it is uh, it, it giving rise to it is giving rise to kind of muscle spasm so it is called spastic paralysis but in case of in case of clostridium botulinum in case of botulinum it usually causes flaccid flaccid paralysis okay now in this case of flaccid paralysis we are talking about unable to contract the muscle right and this is due to uh, the signaling problem between your muscle and the nerve ending or nerve junction right or neuromuscular junction so it kind of kind of problem in so let me write kind of problem in neuromuscular <laughs> neuromuscular junction okay so that's very very important Okay, now we are going to see what is the exact problem that is uh, being encountered by host body when they are uh, subjected to this kind of clostridium toxin. Anyways, now this is among the classical type, which is the most common one. Now, second one is the infant botulism. Now, this infant botulism nowadays is a very common in United States. So, it's a very common, or in fact, it is the most common in USA. Okay, now in this kind of botulism, what we can see is that. Uh, the cause of uh, it's also called as uh, the result of this kind of botulism is also called floppy baby floppy baby syndrome floppy baby syndrome okay now in this case this botulism is affecting uh, infants the infants of 3 to 24 week of age right the toxin produced is slowly absorbed by their intestine and then finally the intestinal wall is becoming very very tightened and thick and they start uh, to die in those cases right so it's a very kind of tragic situations because it is causing uh, the newborn uh, to stiff their muscles in many regions or, or lose their ability to stiff the muscles and actually this kind of infection begins at the large bubble so begin so let me write begins at large bubble okay okay and among this classical also let me talk about a very important part about this uh, classical type because in this case of classical type uh, this any any kind of whatever you take contaminated food and all these things in all these cases uh, the infection usually begins at the gastrointestinal tract they usually begins at the gi tract and then the infection starts and starts spreading from one place to another place that's that's how it's done actually now in infants also it is uh, first begins at the large bowel then it moves and finally it comes to the fl it comes uh, it comes to stiffening of the muscle and also uh, uh, unability to contract the muscle right 
Now third one is a wound botulism. This is a very very rare. So let me write very rare. So it's a very rare kind of situation, but still this kind of situation can be seen. Now in this case, uh, the infection. So infection begins. Infection begins via wound. Right? Infection begins via wound. Okay. And again from this wound. Uh, the infection for the onset of the infection there uh, there can be materials like say say toxin is only material that we require so either bacteria or toxin whatever enters there they start causing the disease or uh, start providing the symptoms for you right now among all these things remember uh, th th this this muscle contraction thing is important right but it, it also important that in which muscle this botulism toxin is acting now if it is the muscle of your heart if it is the muscle of your respiratory tra respiratory region if it's the muscle of your diaphragm in those cases it will surely lead to your death which is happening in classical uh, kind of botulism where the death rate is almost 15 percent so the mortality mortality is almost 50 15 percent there right or more than 15 percent so it is very important that where they are causing the infections but again uh, this toxin is a dangerous so in the future video we will be talking about the mechanism of this pathogenicity by this clostridium toxin okay so that's it and i hope that's helpful thank you